Judy, what are you doing? Ryan, I am getting ready for the time change. The time change was a month ago. Ah, but today, garden time goes to a full hour. Ah. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Time, and welcome to our first hour-long episode of our 15th season. So since we are an hour-long show today, you're going to be seeing stories from Ryan, myself, and from William from the Garden Time archives. Coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about lawn weeds and how to get rid of them. We'll also be giving you an update from the tulip fields. But coming up first, we'll be planting a succulent basket. Well, I'm here today with Margie from Margie's Farm and Garden, and we're talking succulents, and succulents, they are hot. Margie, what do you got for us today? Oh, hi. Yes, thank you. Um, succulents are one of our favorite plants. Um, so today, I pulled a variety of my favorite plants, and we are going to plant a beautiful um, ceramic bowl here with some of our favorites. Um, one of my first favorite is this Euphorbia Fire Sticks. Uh, beautiful coloring it has here and makes a great statement in the pot. So we're gonna put that in first. And then I'm just gonna look for different colors, different textures of things. Um, I love my string of pearls right here. This is a very popular one. So you just be real careful as you kind of squeeze. And it looks like you, you, know, have, you have a really wide selection of different colors and textures. Is there kind of a right or wrong on how you can put these together or is it more kind of personal preference? Oh, it is such just a personal preference of what you love. Um, it's fun to do different, you know, textures and colors with the succulents. There's so many different kinds um, that you can have so much fun with this, but there's definitely no wrong way. Um, what we have here, they all require the same amount of light and water and care. So um, that makes which, it nice. Which is important to keep, keep in mind as you're picking these out to make sure you're putting the right you know Definitely. collection of plants together for livability um i love this echeveria we have here the thing um you know here you come sh um, shopping as with anywhere we can help you make sure you have um what you need to make sure that you have the same care type plants um for your container so that you're successful and then now the, the selection of plants that you have today are these for you know indoors or outdoors or where's the best place to put these what we're planting today is for um, their tender succulents. So they will be outdoor now through, uh, you know, really even through like the beginning of November until we start getting frost. Okay. Um, and you can put them inside your house over the winter to protect them. Um, now, is there, would, I'm assuming they would want, you know, if they're going inside for the winter, they need good lighting. Is that? Yes, yes. Good lighting. And then you can also during the winter... Um, do a little bit less um, watering right now if they're outdoor during the summer, maybe a little shot of water twice a week, which makes them really easy care for busy people. Um, right. during the winter, when you move them inside, you know, maybe once a week at the most. Okay. And they're not super picky about as far as, you know, fertilizer or things like that. They're pretty, yeah, easy. They're, pretty they're pretty easy. They really are once you get them going. So we have some different sizes here available. We have um, some in the four inch, which were the larger ones I put in here. Then we've got some cute little two inch guys. And then we have a section in our greenhouse that we call our succulent buffet, where you can just buy um, plugs. So they're oh, a little, and this is one of my favorite. We call it Shrek ears because it looks like <laughs> Shrek. But it's a good way to get a variety of little plugs to kind of fill in right. a variety of different ones, some trailers, some upright to, um, to fill in a container. So do a little bigger ones, a few smaller ones to make it a little bit more affordable. Oh, sure. So if you have, you know, this great selection, you know, what kind of soil do we need to look at using? Yes, you definitely want a well-drained soil for these, um, for succulents and cacti alike. Uh, so you, there's definitely special um, soil you can use if you don't have that and you have to use your regular potting soil. You just really limit your watering so that it well, because you need well-drained soil. Gotcha. And, yeah, and you have some, you know, you said the collection, you, know, you definitely have the upright ones and you have like the string of pearls that are going to trail down the sides and 
just a wide range of you know heights and shapes and colors and oh and yes things. you definitely want to do your fillers your thrillers and your spillers i mean keep that going with even on your right. succulents to get right. such a variety of things and then it looks so like too once you have, have it planted you have some like you can put decorative rock or decorative stone around to fill in some of those areas too yeah we've got different colors of rock um that are it really adds an extra pop to your container if you use that to decorate around with it so that's what and i'm so doing you, now is and you have you have this great selection out there of all these different types you know different sizes and shapes and colors and i'm you have the i'm assuming sell all the soils and the containers and the decorative rock and i'm assuming yes. you're open right now so what are what are some of your pro protocols right now for for shopping at the farm okay yes we are definitely um open right now we're open monday through saturday nine to five thirty and Sunday, 10 to 4, um, we are um, making sure we're social distancing, so limiting the number of people in at a time, open wide space. So um, we're able to do that. We are handing out um, gloves at the door and sanitizing and um, have face masks if people you know, do not um, have one already that they need. And um, right. we are also doing phone orders um, or email orders um, if you would like to do that and aren't comfortable coming in. So we're doing everything we can to keep everyone feel um, safe and uh, ready to garden with this beautiful weather. It's such a great opportunity to get a start on your, your summer season. Right. Of well, it looks like you know, you got well, well supplied, well stocked, you're ready to go, and you'll be able to take, take care of any customer regardless of you know, how they want to come in and get them taken care of. So, Margie, I appreciate you being with us today. The yeah. painters look beautiful. And, you know, well, if you need any more information, you can go to your website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you on over. Thank oh, you, Margie. Yes. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. What's even better than buying a brand new Subaru? How about getting the best possible value from a place that's as trustworthy and dependable as a Subaru? At Capital Subaru, your satisfaction is our goal, which is why you can always expect the kind of service and selection that keeps you smiling. From our lot to your driveway. Spring savings are here. Now at Capital, lease the versatile new 2020 Subaru Forester Limited with standard eyesight, just $2.99 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. You haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden inside and out with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. So you know, we understand at Garden Time that a lot of us still love a beautiful lawn, but that often takes some effort. Well, I'm here with Tom from Bonite, and we're going to be talking about some products that really make that process so much easier. So what do you have for us today? Well, I've got a number of different uh, products to control both broadleaf weeds and grassy weeds in our lawn uh, and not harm the lawn, not harm the turf grasses. I have natural choices and synthetic. Uh, and I think we should maybe point out and uh, give you a visual of what the difference is between a broadleaf and a, and a grassy weed. Right, because I think a lot of people understand words like broad yep. but, and grass, but what does that mean when we're in a lawn? Well, can we show you? Yeah, let's okay. look at it. So this is what we typically see in most of the, the lawns in the Northwest. So you can see we have turf grasses coming up. 
but here we have a big patch of clover. A lot of clover. Okay. Yeah. So clover is one example of a broadleaf weed. Okay. Okay. Now if we move over here, here's a dandelion. Yep. Okay. And these are famous in the northwest because of that big bright yellow flower, and then it's followed by that that snowball kind of that, that yeah. I call. Uh, but again, that is a broadleaf weed. Okay. So the big fat weeds that pop up in our lawns. Okay. So really, it, 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 the broad is a pretty self-descriptive concept then. It's things that have wider leaves. Yep. So, you know, here's, here's a good visual. So this is just simply a lilac leaf. Uh -huh. Okay. And one way to quickly identify uh, a broadleaf weed, which we call a dicot, uh -huh, okay, okay, is the branched veins in the leaf. All right. Okay. If we got a close-up look of the dandelion leaf, and the clover, you would see branch. They would have that veins. veining out. Yeah. Okay. That's what we call a dicot. Nice. Okay. And then on the opposite side is grassy weeds. All right. Okay. So here's a big patch of um, an unwanted grassy weed. And it looks different. It does. It, it typically is a little bit wider uh, blade of grass. It sure. grows a little faster than our turf grasses. And if you can notice, uh, just slightly off color, a little bit lighter yeah. green, so yep. it's unsightly. And I noticed in, in talking about broadleaf, you used the word dicot. I'm assuming that there's a different term for grass then. Yes, yeah, so grass, whether it's a weedy grass or a turf grass, this is a monocot. And if we had a close-up visual of a blade of one of these grasses, uh, the veins would run parallel. They would run up and down. Okay. So that's a monocot. So I would think then, it, from, from my science, from my past, mono tends to mean like singular one, so it's, yes. it would be more of a, a singular veining upwards than that spread out of the broadleaf. You're absolutely right. But your products do both, right? Yes, yeah, so the active ingredients that we use in our different products can selectively identify a broadleaf, dicot, and or the grassy weed, the monocot, and um, take care of those, control them, but not harm our turf grasses. The regular grass that you actually want to yes. look beautiful. All right, let's walk over and get some of the stuff okay. and then we'll start from there. Good. So now Tom, these uh, sprays are actually for the broadleaf weeds in a lawn. Correct, both of these, the Weed Beater FE and the Weed Beater Ultra are going to do a wonderful job for the broadleaf weeds, the dicots yeah. in our lawn and not harm our turf grasses. And Tom, I noticed again on this one, you got that brown splotch there, so this is a natural one? Yep, so you're holding the Weed Beater FE. You can see the tan swish or the right shoulder of the front of the label. Right. That's indicating that it's a natural active ingredient. And then in my hand, the purple shoulder, this is a synthetic active ingredient. And then um, I'm, a, I'm also gonna make this assumption that these though, unlike the Moss Killer, you don't want to get any of these on your beds. You want to stay on the lawn. Again, spray on a dry day. They're both going to need about three to five hours of dry weather after we've applied. On a calm day, in general rule of thumb, even on a calm day, I like to keep that low to where we're spraying it right. and avoid the flower beds. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Now, if these cover the broadleaf, what's going to cover the grass? Great question. So this one, this is our Weed Beater Plus crabgrass. Again, has the purple shoulder, so it's a synthetic chemical. Now, uh, a little different than the two you're holding, this one will be ten uh, temperature sensitive. Okay. So we need daytime temperatures of 65 and above. Still need that five hours of dry weather after we've applied it. Okay. And most importantly, for our weedy grasses, not our broadleaves, but our weedy grasses, we need to be spraying this on that weedy grass before it sets its seed capsule. Okay. 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 So with all of that said, the window of opportunity is a little bit short, but if we if we spray during that window, very, very effective. Well, if you play the game right, you'll you'll actually win then. Absolutely. Won't you? <laughs> yep. Well, there you have it. So for more information, not only on all of the different products that Bonite carries for the home gardener, but also for the places that you can go, the, the uh, garden centers close to you to buy this stuff, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. 
We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. places to go in the springtime is the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival and you know this year we couldn't go but we have so enjoyed the photos on their web page and so but we are going to be talking to Barb Iverson. Barb what's going on out there? It still looks so beautiful. Uh, you know it's beautiful that you know we're we've been picking flowers we're topping the flowers we're we're kind of working the ground loosening it up a little bit so we're you know we're still out here farming but it's just not the same this year at all you know no. we, we miss the people. Yeah, but man, the pictures, the photos have been tremendous. Thank you so much for posting those. It's so inspiring. Oh, thank you. You bet. It's you know, it's so it's at least one way to share the beauty. Yeah, and you were sharing too. You were um, giving bouquets to people in senior centers and frontliners. How did all that go? Uh, you know, the the response was tremendous. We couldn't ask for a better response. We shipped over ten thousand either pots or bouquets to. Um, senior homes and frontline workers, um, the senior homes, the thank you letters, you know, we, we went to a, over a hundred different homes and it wasn't just to one person in that home. I mean, it was, we, we'd call them up and we'd ask how many residents do you have? And then we'd send them enough flowers for every resident in, uh, that lived there. And so the, just the response has been incredible. I, I just, it's heartwarming. It's at least some good that came out of this. It is. And it is, it's, and thank you so much for doing that because it's so nice for you able to do that. And so, you know, we want to help you guys too. So how can we patronize your company? You know, right now, well, if you're inside, I think alcohol sales have been pretty high, but um, we have wine. <laughs> we have great wine here. You do um, have great wine. <laughs> you can come out, buy some wine to take home. Uh, of course, there's no wine tasting here. But um, besides the wine, you can you can order your bulbs. You know, we have a, a great selection of bulbs, whether it's tulips or daffodils. Um, you can go online and order or, or come out here and place your order. We're open daily from 10 to 4. So um, you can do it that way as well. It is great. And I've heard you had some virtual wine tasting. So are there some more of those in the future? We'll, we'll keep you posted. We've been doing that. It's, and it's quite, uh, it's, it's fun. You know, the interaction is fun because people can ask you questions and you can answer them at the time that you're out in the field. That is so nice. So we'll just kind of check your web page or the Facebook page for those days. Right. We'll keep that posted. That is great. And then, you know, I have my beautiful tulips here in my front yard, and I'm so enjoying them. Um, they're from Wooden Shoe. And so, you know, give us some tips on how to keep them coming back and being so beautiful. Well, you know, one of the things that we're doing in the field right now is we're, we go through and we top the flowers. Hmm. And, and when we do that, we just take the flower off like this. And then all the energy in the plant goes back down into the bulb. 
because right now is when that bulb starts to fill out. So May, we always we always hope for a cool May, because then then the plant will die down slowly, and all that energy goes into increasing. A, you'll get a bigger bulb for next year. You know, if you don't do that, um, you can decrease the size of the bulb for next year by about a third. And as you see in the middle here, this is actually the seed pot in here. So when you break this open, there's seeds in there. There's hundreds of seeds. It takes about um, seven years from seed to flower, so we don't save the seeds. We go after the bulbs. So the bigger the bulb, the better. Uh, so we really want to take that off so the energy goes not to seed production, but to the bulb bulking up. Right. And we, we top the entire field by hand. Wow. So we, go through, we top all the flowers, take all the seed pods off. Uh, and then, so if we put our um, our orders in now, then we can pick them up or you ship them in the fall, right? Yes, late September, early October. Because oh, that's, perfect. you know, then you get them, you don't have to worry about them, you can plant them right away. That is good. And the pictures online on your catalog are just wonderful. I know that um, you all do those photos. And again, they're just they're just tremendous and they're, they make you just smile. Yeah, of course, it's nothing like coming out and seeing the flowers in person. But, you know, it's a good second. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll do that again. I mean, there's the future. We'll we'll be able to come out again. And um, any other things you want to tell people or parting shot? You know, we're still out, we're still out here farming. We're still out taking care of our crop, um, digging the bulbs. We'll dig the bulbs in in uh, late May and June, and and replant in October. And we're looking forward to 2021. Uh, we all are. We all are. And I know that you're going to have more photos about production and all the attending on your webpage and Facebook page. So that's going to be so interesting to kind of see because we don't always get to see that part of the of the um, tulip field. So thank you so much for all you do. And thank you for for just the beauty that you're bringing us while we're all just stuck looking at the Internet. Thanks so much, Barb. You're welcome. Thank you. At Sagawa Nursery, we talk about going beyond the ordinary. Whether it's new and exciting varieties of plants and shrubs, to our wide selection of unique Japanese maples, or our great collection of tools, garden products, and Asian-themed gifts, we can help transform your garden into something extraordinary. Come in and let us make your garden a showcase. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem.
Well, there's a big craze right now going on in gardening, and that's the vegetable gardening. And I'm here with at, with Jack from Al's Garden and Home. And Jack, you've been gardening for a lot of years now, haven't you? Yeah, nigh on 60 years, yes. And now I, we hear a lot about victory gardens. And so what, what can you tell us about victory gardens? Well, I understand. I was born in 41, so I was five years old when the war was over. But my folks had a victory garden. Their parents had a victory garden. My wife and I were talking about it. Her folks had a victory garden. And her everyone had a victory garden. And I just read some figures somewhere the other day where half of the farm produce produced during the war was produced in victory gardens across the United States. I think that fact is fairly close to true. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a craze that's been around for a lot of years, and we're finally seeing this resurgence of it of it now. So so what, what are things, you know, with, with gardenings have changed and people's you know, landscapes have changed, what are, what are some of the trends now that people can use for, for vegetable gardening? Well, most everybody's into raised beds now. Of course, I've always farmed out in the open field because I've had enough ground. But the amount that you can produce in raised bed is absolutely astronomical. If you sit down and keep track of what you're producing, you'll be just blown away at what you can come up with. It's amazing. Yeah, and as people's yards are getting a little bit smaller and they don't have the acreage to plant, are there you know some vegetables that are better for doing in raised beds than others? Oh, sure. If you get into your determinate varieties of tomatoes, the vines grow smaller, but the tonnage of fruit is almost the same. Uh, there's just an awful lot of all of your lettuces. You can plant those every four weeks and just keep them coming fresh all summer long. Uh, there, there's just a lot of things. Onions, they take up no room hardly at all. Uh, easy done. For every seed potato you put in the ground, you're going to get 20 fold back. Uh, anything like that. And, and it, it, once you start eating this material, you're going to be spoiled it's going to be hard to go back to the grocery store because fresh homegrown is unbeatable. So once you get started, you're going to be hooked. Now, you know, for, for the novice gardener that's just starting to get in into doing this, what are some things that they might need uh, to get their garden so they could be successful as far as like materials and, and some of the care they might need? Well, if you have the raised bed already, Get it cleaned up, get all the weeds out of it, all the grasses, haul it away, get it all cleaned up and cleaned. Fertilize the whole thing with good, slow-release organic. Watch out where you're planting the tomatoes. Don't fertilize that near as much as you do everything else because tomatoes grow too much vine, and there's for it shades the fruit, and they ripen later. So you want a little tomato plant with a lot of fruit on it. So everywhere else, put a good coat of fertilizer down, homogenize it, till it into the soil, mix it up good, start planting. You're home free. That's all it takes. Because there's lots of different vegetables that you can plant, you know, during different times of the year. Some do better earlier season and there are summer ones and then even fall crops, right? Right. We call most of those cold crops. Your cabbages, cauliflowers, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, would we'll plant all of those in July and start harvesting in late September, October, and many of them will carry right into the winter. And if you get a mild winter like we had this year, you'll still be picking them in April and March. So those are called fall crops. You can also plant those earlier, but maybe you want to put your space to something else earlier. And then as you take out radishes or carrots or something else, put down the fall crop material. Right. And and rotation that way. And right now, you know, we're kind of on that cusp where we're getting you know, past the end of these frost dates. Is there anything that we need to be concerned about planting now that it's not too warm out to plant? Well, the only thing you might want to hold off on is peppers because uh, peppers – 
if they get chilled, they'd rather grow down instead of grow up. So I would wait to the 15th of May for peppers. But everything else, uh, normally we consider the la- first of May the last frost date. And the way things are going this year, I'd suggest you could get started now and just get a two-week jump on it. And now uh, you guys have an amazing selection there at your stores of all the various different starts, the different the seeds, uh, all the materials, the soils, the fertilizers that you'll you'll need for uh, being successful. And I, you know, your your staff is going to be able to, you know, help you with that because they're with all the knowledge. So um, if you have customers coming in. I'm assuming your staff will be able to do that. And you, you know, right now have price a little different hours going on and little different protocols that you'll have posted up on your, on your website, right? Yes, we're doing the social spacing and all of that. But remember, our spring is three weeks early this year. And our, you didn't tell us in January that you were going to do this virus thing and give me an early spring too. <laughs> Right, so pe- so people can put put together the list of you know the things they they're looking for, their wants and their needs in their vegetable garden, and the, you know the knowledgeable staff at Al's will will help you plan out your garden beds to make you successful. And you know, as always, make sure you check your website uh, for the any new changes and the protocols, or you can check over to GardenTime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. So Jack, it's always a pleasure to to talk with you. We appreciate all your knowledge and your information and we look forward to seeing you in the garden thank you brian thanks for coming on with us find everything you need for spring at al's garden and home Many people looking for healthcare alternatives have experienced the benefits of CBD oils and creams. But how do you know you're getting the highest quality products? Trust Red Barn Hemp. We sustainably grow the hemp on our farm in the Willamette Valley, then extract the oil in our industry-leading on-site lab. All plants, oil, and final product are tested along the way, so you can be assured you're getting the highest quality CBD products available. Have questions? Stop by our retail store or check out our website. Red Barn Hemp. For family. For life. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. So it's a beautiful spring day. We're out here with Diana out of Terracasa. You know, we're in our gardens this time of year. There's lots of flowering trees and shrubs and hanging baskets, but there's so much more that we can do with the garden. So we're looking amongst all this great yard art. And what, are, what do we have out here? So I call this the icing on the cake. You've got everything else in place, but now it's kind of fun to add a little whimsy, add a little um, color, um, even beyond the flowers. But we have a lot of um, garden stakes um, that are spinners and we have um, a lot of beautiful brightly colored mushrooms that you can put in a little cluster in your landscape to, to just brighten it up and um, and then a lot of the yard art from Think Outside which we've talked right. about before but they're individual they're unique one-of-a-kind pieces that just bring a whole new element to your landscape and I even saw you sell dog houses <laughs> well I couldn't resist so there's this beautiful dog house from Think Outside and they come in small medium and large sizes and 
they're just fabulous. It'd be such a fun piece, not just as an art piece in your yard, but also for the dog to use. Right, so it's like, you know, art, but it's also practical. Very functional, exactly. Good. And another practical piece I saw you're holding on to is this Mason Bee House, or Native Bee House. Right, it is. It's actually, um, it's for, it's a multi-habitat house, so it can okay. attract many different kinds, but it is primarily for bees, and it's fun to look at, but it also is functional as well. Okay, yeah, you're hanging on a garden wall, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's attractive, yet, mm -hmm. yet very functional. Yes, we got to take care of the bees, too. Right. We need them. <laughs> It was such an amazing selection of yard art. It's great to get outside and accessorize. I want to thank you, Diana, for letting us come out to Terra Casa and enjoy all these wonderful items that you have to sell. Thank you. Well, I'm going to be talking with Stacy from French Prairie Gardens. And Stacy, you know, we love coming out, so it's so great that you're going to show us all the beauty of your flowers this season. It's so great to see you. Yes, yeah, yeah, and we are open for everybody to come in the store, so um, we're just excited to show you what we have to offer. Well, great, and I think that these um, skyscraper salvias, they were so great last year, but this year there's more color, so tell us yes. about them. Yeah, so we have, um, there's, a, there's a red this year, it's Ooh. called Roman Red, it's actually by Ball, so it's not by Selecta, but... Um, it has a great habit, and it has kind of a shiny leaf, and they'll continue to bloom all summer long. There's also a new purple. This one's just kind of starting to come out. This is called Purple and Bloom, and the hummingbirds just love them. It's too uh, bad, like, a half an hour ago this didn't happen because there was hummingbirds all over this. <laughs> but they still have the orange, and then they also have, um, have the pink, too. Um, something to remember with these is you can just – trim them off as they kind of cycle through and they'll shoot new ones. And then also, um, we love this for hanging baskets, but it works oh, great sure. for all of our flowering shrubs and stuff. So you got to remember to feed those babies too. Sure. Cause then they'll really keep pumping all season long. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Great. And you know, you have that great series too, the night sky petunias, which are great in baskets. Yes. Yeah. So, um, we have a whole lot of these, uh, here's the night sky, the purple one. Ooh. And we have a bunch of them in four inch for right now. Um, and then we have the burgundy, the starry sky burgundy. And then, of course, the pink sky. The pink sky is a little bit more upright and the burgundy and the night sky kind of spread more. So those are good for pots or for, um, you know, in the landscape. They'll kind of just brighten oh, up nice. the little spot. Yeah, they're just so cool. Something really different for petunias. Yes. Yeah, we love them. And then we also have them in some of our basket combinations. So um, if there's one that you like, you can even match it and then get some for your planters or some for your beds. And then it'll be all over. <laughs> for sure. And then every year, you guys, you and Katie, you come up with the greatest um, combos. So anything uh, cool and new for your basket combos? Yeah, yeah. So um, we, one one thing that we did this year is we did some that were pink and red since that's kind of like the in thing. So this one's a large basket. Whoa. It's got, it's got Vista bubblegum pink. And then it also has uh, a red Pachoa in it. And it'll just keep blooming all summer long. But the fun thing is, is that it's great to try different combinations like this that we're normally not used to seeing. That is nice. I think every year you should try something different because it's basket time and it's like, just get creative and see what you guys have out there because, wow, I could see all of the ones behind you. They're beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And the great thing is, is that right now is the perfect time to hang them. They kind of form better right now. They don't get as leggy. Um, the weather's been great. Um, and, you know, it's, they're easier to haul. They don't get as stressed. So, um, right now is really the perfect time for hanging baskets. And then don't forget to get the, the Jack's uh, fertilizer too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, these baskets are definitely heavy feeders. So the Jack's is a great thing to do uh, either weekly or twice a week uh, as much as you want just to keep them going. Um, and then it kind of helps. You don't have to deadhead it as much because it'll sh oh, shove right. the new blooms over the top um, and kind of do the work for you. Definitely. And, you know, we love coming out because we love coming to the store or going into the nursery. So uh, is everything the same during this time? 
Uh, it's a little bit different. Um, of course, you know, we ask that people try to stay six feet away from our staff. Um, you know, we're allowing more people to get down their own baskets and kind of um, go through the garden center uh, a little bit more independently. Uh, we do have a gate on the side for people that just want to purchase in the garden center and a register out in the garden center. So um, they can purchase all their st all their plants out here and then maybe not cause as much traffic in the farm store. Um, and then we also have our bakeries open. Um, we have lots of pies. We're doing rolls. Um, and then we also have fresh produce. So if you're looking to uh, get groceries, we're kind of trying to get as many things as we can in for people. We have uh, beef. We have pork. Uh, we have all sorts of stuff. And can we call ahead? Can you kind of be our shoppers? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can call ahead. And, you know, depending on the day, usually we can fill it within an hour. Um, and if we're really busy, it'll probably be the end of the day. It just kind of depends on how many customers we have in the store. Um, but, you know, yeah, yeah, we definitely have um, a lot of things available. We do still have our farm bar open. We can't serve pints, unfortunately, due to the OLCC, but mm -hmm. we can do growlers. So if people want to add on a growler, that's available. We even started carrying canned uh, beer and cider. Um, and so we're just kind of trying to roll with roll with it, so to say, and uh, provide people in our community with as much as we can. You know, that makes it so much easier because we're all really stressed right now, but to come out and see all the pretty plants, you have the beautiful flowers, pick up fresh baked goods, pick up a beer and a growler. I mean, it just makes it so much easier for us <laughs> that are stuck at home. Yes, so definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, really, thank you so much for everything. And if you have any other questions about French Prairie Gardens, go to their website, go to their Facebook page and contact them or take a ride out and get some of these beautiful baskets or a pie to take home. Thanks oh, yeah. so much, Stacey. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden. Just off I-5 near Aurora. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Repel moles, gophers, and other ground burrowing critters with Mole Max from Bonide. Clean and biodegradable, it's safe to use around children, plants, and pets. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. So I'm standing here with Jeff of Grimm's Fuels. Now, first of all, Jeff, you, you guys are a lot more than just fuel. So let's talk about some of the other products you have. Sure, we have, uh, in the wintertime, we have the firewood and the fuel oils, of course, and that was kind of where we started. And then in the summertime, we branch out and do more landscape supply products. So the bark dust, the compost. And you even have some types of gravels for like paths and stuff as well, don't you? Pathways, driveway gravels, stuff like that, pea gravel for under this uh, swing sets and playground yeah. areas. Same thing with the chips. We have the cedar chips that are good for underplay structures. And then you have a great product that I know that you personally really like, which is a very, very fine, almost sand-like compost. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's, we call it our lawn and turf mix, and it's my personal. I, I have a big lawn, and so uh, unfortunately, sometimes- Nobody's gonna judge you, you on to that, mow. Jeff. That's when you have to mow. <laughs> Uh, so it's real super fine compost. It's mixed with sand and uh, like coffee ground consistency really? compost. 
So I'll aerate my lawn and then uh, put down some seed, overseed and then spray on the lawn and turf mix on nice. a real fine layer. Helps keep those moisture uh, in the seeds and so they can germinate. Keeps the birds and stuff from Great. attacking and eating it all. Well now, today though, we are actually at our producer's house and, and they are having this, this great, well, I love this concept where they actually blow the compost on. They're getting some garden mulch blown on. Tell me about that and how that process works. Well, garden mulch is the organic compost that we made from the stuff that comes into our yard debris recycling center. So we take your yard debris or Jeff's yard debris from his can, at the curbside. Sure. We take that and we grind it up and we put it in our compost piles and heat it up to 140 to 160 degrees and keep it there that way for four to six months. Wow. So it kicks, cooks out all those her, uh, weed seeds and herbicide residuals. So if there's any left over, if people have sprayed in their yard some kind of uh, chemical thing, that will cook it out. Yeah, it nice. cooks it out very quickly. The stuff that we can get our hands on as consumers anymore has got a real short half-life, yeah. the, the Roundup and stuff. It breaks down naturally in 30 days. Well, you hook, cook, hook, cook it to 140 to 160 degrees and it breaks down even faster. And then all our compost is certified by the U.S. Composting Council to be weed free and free of pesticides nice. and herbicide residuals. So. And so then, if, of course, people can have it either delivered or they can come out and, and pick it up. And then they can choose to put it on by wheelbarrow, which is a lot of work. Or they can have you guys come out and blow on the stuff, which is so simple for the, for the gardener. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a lot less work than the old shovel and rake it method. It really yeah. is. Yes. Well, you know, one of the things that I love about having this kind of stuff done is they don't just come in and blow it around. They actually make sure that the sidewalks, everything is cleaned after they're done. It's a real great process. Yeah, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we do the cleanup. So you don't have to do anything except sit on the porch and drink coffee, if you yeah. like. And, uh, Unless it's in the it, afternoon. And they could drink a beer while they watch it happen. <laughs> That's right. And no beer for the guys. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they do all the work, all the cleanup, the whole nine yards. So Jeff, you also have a great product called a blended soil. First of all, what does that mean? And then what is the value of having it in your garden? Well, blended soil is like a topsoil substitute. By definition, the topsoil is the top four inches of earth, and we yep. just don't have much of that out there. So with our poor quality soils, we kind of manufacture what we call blended soil. So we'll take sandy loam, sandy, silty soil. We'll mix it with our compost and uh, some mushroom compost. So then you can use that in like a raised bed. It's real popular for flowers and vegetables in a raised bed or a berm or any place you just need more soil. So tell me a couple of things. What would be the benefits of having this mulch sprayed on? Well, the guard mulch is more nutritious. It's better for your plants and soils than the straight bark dust. And we sell a lot of straight bark dust also. We have the reds, the browns, and the black kinds of bark dust. But the garden mulch has just more nutri nutrients. It's a compost. And they can spray any of the, the bark dust on, whether oh, yeah. it's the garden mulch or the other varieties as well. That's correct, yeah. And then you get weed seed. You know, in the summertime, you want to keep your plants moist and again, yeah. retain some moisture. So it's good for that and weed suppression. Yeah. And so. so there you have it. You know, you work hard in your garden. You get out there, you do all the job. It looks really great. And the perfect topping for that would be to call Grimm's, have them come out and blow on some uh, either bark dust or some of the garden mulch. Jeff, it's always a delight being hanging out here and talking with you. Thank you so much. All right, let's get the shovel and get to <laughs> That's work. That's right. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and today we're gonna to talk about some tips and tricks to help you when you're planting tomatoes. At Bauman's, we have dozens of varieties of tomatoes ready to go for you right now, including some of our heirloom varieties, like some of our favorites, Black Crim, Brandywine, Cherokee Purple, or some of the more staples. My mom's absolute favorite is Sun Gold, which is a sweet yellow cherry tomato. But we have all these different varieties. Where do you even begin to select which one you want? And a lot of the first questions I'll ask people is, okay, well, what do you want to do with them? If, for example, if you want to make sauce or can with them, you want to select a type of tomato that they call determinate. And what that means is that that tomato is going to set on all of its tomatoes all at one time, so that when you go to can, all those tomatoes are ready at once. They also have indeterminate varieties. If you're just looking for go out to the garden and pick a nice tomato to slice on that hamburger, an indeterminate variety sits on its tomatoes throughout the season, so you'll get a more continuous supply that way. My mom loves to make tomato sauce, so we've selected one of our favorite determinate tomatoes. This is called a celebrity. 
Uh, it's one of our favorites. It's actually one that we plant out in our fields to harvest for the store. When you're going to plant your tomato, there's a couple things to remember. It's great to start with a really good organic fertilizer. Our favorite at Bauman Farms is Tomato Tone. All organic, everything you need to make sure that you grow the best tomatoes possible. For new plantings, it takes three tablespoons per tomato plant. So let's start there. All right, so we got about three tablespoons of the tomato tone in here. We're gonna mix that into the top layer. Now, when we go to plant our tomato, this is one of the hard things for everybody to understand. If you look at your tomato closely, you'll see all these little hairs growing around your tomato start. All of that will turn into good roots. So you wanna plant it nice and deep, just like this. All right, we got this guy planted nice and deep in here. Uh, all we gotta do is water it now consistently and watch it grow. We have a lot of times people come in at the end of the season and say, I've got this huge tomato plant. It's all got tons of green tomatoes, but none of them are ripening up. What do I do? One trick to remember is that during the summertime, cut out all your fertilizer and you want to stress this plant out. It needs to realize that now is my time. I got to ripen my fruit or it's not going to happen. So really stretch out the days in between watering, no fertilizer. And before you know it, you're going to have ripe tomatoes. For more information, go to our website at baumansfarmandgarden.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. We had abundance of Meyer lemons on our tree and we decided to make lemoncello. Now lemoncello is an Italian liqueur that's especially delicious in the summertime. It really is and it's really easy to make. All you do is take your lemons and you're just going to kind of wedge them into about four, five, six pieces and once you do that, all you do is add them into a jar. Now once you put them in the jar, we're going to fill it up with a grain alcohol. You can also use vodka or any lightly or no flavor type of alcohol. And if you don't want it to be alcohol, all you have to do is put water in. And this is what it'll look like. Now make sure that you put a cap on it and then you want to store it in a cool, dry place. About every week or so, you want to go in and just rotate the jar to make sure the liquid is catching all of the fruit because it's actually breaking down the fruit to flavor the liquid. And in about one month, we'll go in and we'll go to the next step. Well, it's about 30 days after we started the limoncello recipe and it's time to finish. So about every week or so we went in and we did shake up the bottle so that the alcohol did get all the flavor of the lemons. William, can you help? I can. So what we're gonna do now is strain the lemons from the alcohol in this bowl. Ooh, it smells nice. My lemons aren't coming out. Oh, I'll get that. <laughs> I'll get that and if you can start on the I simple can. syrup. Now for the simple syrup, it's really, really quite simple. Four cups mm -hmm. of water, three cups of sugar. You pour that in and then we are adding one cup of honey because the honey will really give the limoncello this really wonderful flavor. Get all that down there and then I'm just going to start stirring all this together. There you Can go. Help? Okay. And we're going to stir this for about five to 10 minutes until the sugar completely dissolves. Okay, well now, it, it really happened quite quickly. The sugar is already dissolved along with the honey, so now we're going to add the lemons into this mixture. And the grain alcohol stays in the bowl. We don't want to add that yet, so we're just adding the lemons that have been sitting in the alcohol. So now here's the fun part. <laughs> Once the lemons are into the syrup, you just take a potato masher, and you just start mashing them. You do this because you're getting just that last bit of great flavor from the lemons into the syrup. Once that is done, then you're gonna let the whole thing simmer for five to 10 minutes, and that'll really complete the process of it. So I think this is about done, I think Judy. so, William. So our next step then is we wanna strain out all the lemon rinds and the seeds from the lemons. So I'm gonna carefully pour this into this sieve. Now remember in the bottom of this bowl, is where all of the liquor from that we originally poured off is. 
That's a lot of lemons it in there. It is. Smell it's a delicious. lot of juice, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. And so we're going to strain it. Oh, that smells really good, William. You did a great job. Thanks. All right. And so I'm going to drain off all of the goodies of the lemoncello. And then William's going to help me. And we are going to put it right in this jar and we're going to strain it one more that, time. Yeah, that's really important because you can see a lot of the pulp is still in there. So we're carefully going to pour it into a jar. Let's see how carefully I can do this. Ooh, there we great. go. And then once you have that almost full. There we go. You've gotten the last straining done. Then you take the lid, put back onto the jar. Now the great thing about this <laughs> is once you seal it up like that, it doesn't have to be tight. You put it in the fridge, you can drink limoncello that you made all summer long. Cheers. So a lot of people ask about Japanese maples and when a good time to prune those is. So there's lots of different theories on the best time. And a lot of people will say that you can pretty much prune a Japanese maple almost any time during the year. So a lot of people will go through in either the fall or winter months after the leaves have come off so they can kind of see the branching in the structure and remove large branching. I like to go through this time of year when the tree is just starting to leaf out and go through and do a little bit more fine pruning and finding some of the dead foliage that from over the winter that I can remove. So now that I can see where it's all of these branches and a new growth are leafing out, I can also see inside the tree where there's some dead branching that hasn't, isn't gonna leaf out and I can remove those. So if I go through and just start cleaning out some of this older foliage or older branching that's in here, I can, Kind of reduce the amount of branching that's inside the tree opens it up a little bit so you can see the structure and let the rest of the tree leaf out normally for the rest of the spring so that's our tip of the week on how to prune the japanese maple hope this helps and if you need any other information you go to gardentime.tv Ryan and I thank you for watching Garden Time today. And don't forget, if you want to visit your favorite independent garden center, just go to their website and check out their safety precautions. And for more information on the episodes today or to watch them again, make sure you go to gardentime.tv. We thank you for watching and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Located in the heart of Willamette Valley's hops, hazelnut, and wine country, Caddy Farms is a beautiful option for your upcoming wedding or event. Enjoy the diverse venue the over 40-acre farm offers, with manicured gardens, a private forest and spacious meadow, chef's kitchen, and covered patios. All just five minutes off of I-5 in Aurora, Oregon. Caddy Farms, now booking upcoming events. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.